Uh, welcome everyone to today's webinar. I am Kai Ling, the Regional Field Application Scientist of Azuba Systems. Today we will look into Sapphire FL, Biomolecular Imager, how it can help us to do a flexible fluorescence imaging from in vitro samples up to your in vivo samples. First, let me start with a brief introduction about the company. Azu Biosystems is the United States based company located in uh, California state. We're a team of highly experienced scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs dedicated to accelerating your science. We have products that combine very smart and simple workflows with high performance and affordability so you can have the confidence in your data and also the flexibility in terms of the model that you've chosen and also the data that it carries you wherever your research want to go. Okay, right. So the company, this is our company portfolio, equipment portfolio. This year we launched two new products. Okay, the first one is Kemi Solo. The second one will be the start of our today's presentation, which is Sapphire FL via Molecular Imager. It is a next generation fluorescence laser-based scanning system, which is an upgraded version from what it had back in 2017. In brief, Azuba Systems is a Western blood solution provider. We have gel systems, reagents, and consumables to perform your Western blood and also imaging system to capture pictures of your Western blood as well. In terms of Azu imaging solutions we have in our company portfolio, we have three main lines, also product lines. The first one is Azu imaging systems. Then we have Sapphire FL Biomolecular Imager and Chemisolo, as you can see in the middle. Each of them serve a different purpose or they are specialized in different applications. If you want, uh, if they, these are the applications overview of all these three systems covered in total. For example, a zoo imaging systems can cover your basic gel documentations and, and also chemiluminescent signals and also fluorescent signals. Chemisolo, as you can see from the name itself, is dedicated to image chemiluminescent signals, while Sapphire FL is focusing on fluorescence imaging. Okay, so it's image at high resolutions. As you can see, you can image Western blood, gel, array, plate, okay, mouse, and also including phosphor imaging as well. So this is what we're going to talk about today and how this instrument can help us in terms of generating high throughput data. So let's meet the Sapphire FL. FL here stands for flexibility and also fluorescence. So we have two FL here. That's why we name it Sapphire FL. You have the flexibility in what you want to image on the systems and the flexibility in terms of choosing what kind of fluorescent signals that you want to stain or you want to detect from your samples. These are the key features of Sapphire FL. Firstly, it is highly sensitive due to the detector technology, which I will explain later. And on top of that, you have customizable and user changeable optical modules. We have wide adjustable Z plane for you to adjust the focus based on your sample type. For example, you're using membrane or gel or slides or plate. We have dif different preset focus for your samples. And the system can image up to 5 micron resolutions from 1000 to 5 micron resolutions, which is very helpful if you want to image a wide variety of samples. For example, your Western block membrane up until something, let's say, like IHS C slides, a tissue stain slides, sorry, tissue slides. This system also comes with 5 anesthesia port a gaseous anesthesia port for imaging your live animals. And it also has a chemiluminescence detection with additional, uh, or say, supplementary uh, chemiluminescence module equipment. Right. Let us look at the FL part. The first thing is how the system detecting the fluorescent signals, uh, why it can re uh, reach such high sensitivity and also resolutions. So these are the detectors that use in Azu instruments, we cover from scientific CMOS, CCD, and the one that we use, or the two that we use in Sapphire AFL will be the PMT, photo multiplier tubes, and APD, Avalanche Photodiode. These two detectors are being specifically used in Sapphire AFL because they are best at specific wavelength 
for example, the fluorescent wavelength, side two, side three wavelength, and another one may be very good in near infrared wavelength and so on. They are best in detecting such signals as compared to CCD and CMOS, which is focused on different kind of application. For example, a single field of view capturing or fast and quick capturing as well. So Sapphire AFL is a laser scanning system. As you can see, it is very competitive. It has very competitive advantages in terms of the sensitivity and also the detection. It is a point scanner, okay? The point scanner, which is a laser scanner, the laser scanner that we use with TMT or APT detector that we pair it with, with the wavelength that is best that you det want to detect on. In that, it can achieve very high sensitivity. So you can see this is the schematic that Diagram. We have a laser scanning laser here, shining, uh, shine, uh, shooting its laser excitation light onto your fluorescent samples. Here I have a fluorescent Western blood samples here, and then it's a point-to-point -point scanning. So you you have it shine, uh, shoot the laser uh, light source on the fluorophores. Then the fluorophore will be detected by the PMT or APD detectors, depending on the wavelength or the dye that you've chosen. So this is a point scanner focused on laser power on one point, or we can say pixel by pixel. As compared to other uh, imaging system or scanner system on the market, we are, they either, either they are using a line scanner or they are using CMOS detector. This is our strength here, the strength of Sapphire AFL. It, in, that in such way, it can achieve very, very high sensitivity. Right, let us look at the second FL then. Now we're looking at the dye or fluorescent signals flexibility. This design is a still a patent pending design of Sapphire FL. So Sapphire FL supports excitation wavelength between 375 up until 850 nanometer wavelength. They were not listed here, but it is supported. And emission wavelength between 380 up until 900 nanometer wavelengths. So you can see this is our modular designs that you can insert into the Sapphire AFL. It is fully, very easy to do. User can do it themselves. And then it's very, this a something like, is a modular design. Sometimes I call it a cassette because it looks like, you know, the old days, the cassette that we can use. And it is inside this cassette, also the module, it has your laser and also the PMT or APD detector. And this whole thing that you see on this image, this is the filter that you can swap in or swap out depending on what kind of dye that you're going to use. So the laser and emission filter, they are uncoupled. They are not packed. You can mix and match whatever you like. In this way, the modular design of Sapphire AFL is not only supporting the normal or the generic fluorescent signals such as your RGB and your infrared fluorescence. For example, the RGB, the, this is a 488, 532 or 638, and then the near infrared channels over here, the 685 or 784. It can also uh, support non-generic or the dyes that you commonly use for different applications. For example, the yellow fluorescence protein or PI, or red fluorescence protein, M cherries, and so on and so forth. One of them will be DAPI. So Fire AFL supports very wide way, uh, range of wavelength. One of them is DAPI. This is what uh, our Azuba system designed specifically for Sapphire AFL because we know that DAPI requires UV excitations. It is very specific to fluorescence or confocal microscopy and we don't see this in other scanning system. Okay, right. So DAPI excitation emission wavelength. So you can see here, this is the DAPI excitation and the emission wavelength. And usually why we don't see this in generic like scanning system because they are not uh, supporting the excitation at the UV range. But at the right uh, DAPI uh, excitation and emission filters, we can image it properly. And as I mentioned, it is only available in Sapphire AFL right now compared to all the other scanning system on the market. Either be laser scanning system or non-laser scanning system. It can, well, Azul Sapphire AFL is the only one to support DAPI imaging. Right, so how it affects the data then, or how it expands in terms of the samples. For one of the examples that we can use in in-cell western, something that you may hear frequently, but 
uh, you may be doing it right now. So this is an example of in-cell westerns of Hela cell that we seeded in a serial dilution manner, one, uh, one to two ratio down to the each column. So the bottom row is the negative control. All these cells are stained, overstained with DAPI, which is a very, very common nuclear stain where we use on either staining tissue slides or ICC, immunocytochemistries or some other uh, applications. Right. So in insulin western stain with DAPI, on the left, we have uh, the the plate that scan with the generic 4A8, which is our side two channels uh, of the fluorescence uh, channels, uh, which is the excitation emission wavelengths. As you can see, because it is not compatible, you can't really detect the signals using the traditional 4A8 laser or the side two channels. And if you use the custom optical module that we designed specifically for DAPI, then you can you can image and you can capture the signals of the DAPI uh, stain in the plate or slice, as you can see on the B, uh, B picture B over here. I can see at the bottom left, you can see later on in the later uh, slice, we, I will have all these labeled at the bottom left. And this modular design also, as I mentioned before, is uncoupling the excitation from the emission itself. So excitation emission, you can mix and match. So there will be endless possibility for you to mix, let's like, say the 375 to different kinds of filters, depending on what kind of dyes that you use. So you don't need to repeatedly purchase uh, additional modules, okay? Or you don't need to, you just need to request and check whether it's in the list. If it's compatible, then you can image it. One of the example is a specialty assay such as a mega source dyes. And a mega Sox size right here. This is a DY4A1XL. Okay, this is a mega sox for a false family. So they are characterized by this dramatic shift from their uh of the ex emission peaks from the excitation peaks, unlike the rest of the generic uh I'll say standard uh, near uh fluorescence channels that we see before. As you can see, this is 44, it has excitation of 522, okay, and the emission wavelength peaks at 5 6 uh, 58. Okay, so they are very good in floor cytometry application, okay, because um they will they they are very good for uh yeah so for us uh all right uh for us a microscopy right so if you use it for other kind of applications so for example here we have a western blot of a serially diluted hella cell lysate prop with anti stat free primary antibody where the secondary antibody right now other than is not the generic like 4a8 channel or sci2 dyes or some so on we are using the mega stock dyes and this you can image it with a custom configured optical module which is the standard 4A8 laser plus a, a different emission filters that match with this uh, emission wavelength of the mega stock dice. So you can see at the bottom left, this is how we mix and match it 4A8 plus 624 excitation emission wavelengths. So the, the, this data demonstrates the flexibility provided by mix and matching the lasers and filters here, over here. Let's move on with the flexibility in terms of applications and sample type, right? So this one instrument, we do want to design it in a way that it can support countless or as much as application as possible. So it is a very good, I'll say intermediate equipment before you go to, let's say, convocal or for cytometry that you may not have the system or you need to outsourced to service or is in a different lab. This is a very good, this, uh, this piece of equipment is very good to serve that purpose before you move on to those higher end of the uh, of the detection methods or the essay uh, or the imaging, uh, imaging applications. And also at its own, if you, the, uh, the result is also very good, okay, in terms of the fluorescence signal as well. It's not restricted in that way unless you want to look at something, let's say, in the nuclei or the color uh, localization or certain markers that would need microscope uh, levels. So this equipment fulfills the need and also requirement to support in vitro basic discovery up until in vivo validations and publication. It's either way, it can either be your top down or uh, means so from in vitro your harvest sample down to the molecular validations or from in vitro all the way up then you validated it in uh, animals small animals or even in human samples so let's look at how it supports a proteomic research pipeline then so this is a schematic diagram uh, 
on what we mentioned about in vitro to in vivo. For example, you have your cell lysate uh, harvest from tissue or cell line. Then you can do something like a fluorescence western blot or something like a in cell western or fixed cells that you want to scan or check well, whether the expression or transfection efficiencies all these are feasible. Up until tissue slides or cell uh, ICC, immunocytochemistries, such as slides, whole organ also feasible and up until in vivo levels, which is a live animal or living organisms, right? So the living organisms has a, as long as it fit within 4 cm, then you can fit with it. So here we will say the, the maximum thing you can put maybe a, a mice, or maybe a skinny rat will be uh, will be sufficient to fit into the uh, system to scan it. The first application that we see, the uh, which is very routinely done on in the laboratory, which will be membranes and gels. Here, I'm specifically talking about fluorescent signals that we use in Western blot. Uh, imply specifically for fluorescence western blot. So what is western blot? Just a quick briefing about what is western blot technique. It is a technique to confirm the presence and also the relative abundance of a specific proteins in the complex samples. It's an immunoassay, so it requires primary antibody to bind to your protein of interest and the secondary antibody and detector molecules to visualize the band or the proteins that you want to look for. Here's an example of a four channels or four plex fluorescence western blot that we generate in-house. So we can see here we have transferrin, okay, tubulin, and gap DH and RNA RNAs A protein on these uh, samples. So for fluorescence western blot, it allows you to probe for multiple protein of interest at the same time, right? No stripping or reprobing. So it actually generates data in a much larger scale and also save you a lot of time and cost as well. And it's very great for situations with limited samples. And most importantly, the data that you generate from this blot it is a quantitative result. So transferrin, we image it uh, at uh, 4 a channels, tubulin at the sine sine uh, sine sine three channels. This is sine 5.5, sine 7. Sorry, sorry. This is uh, 700, 800. This is 500, which is sine three channels. So this is how the four plex work in fluorescence western blot. It also applies to all other applications, not only on western blot. You can use it in gels, in wells, uh, six well plate, other things that you want to uh, detect, you can do so. And the system also allows you to image total proteins so for your total protein normalization control. It is a much, this is the total protein that we see, they can image it. It's a better method of normalization and it's a much accurate, more accurate than the housekeeping uh, protein. And for all the fluorescent signals that we can detect, on Sapphire FL, there is an option for we for you to do extended dynamic range EDR uh, for the complex samples to allow the quantitation for more data. What does it mean? So in a normal scenario, when you have this is what we have here. We we put uh, I think it's BSA for uh, for uh, eight picogram and up to two thousand forty eight picograms, and you can see in a generic imaging method and you. Uh, that will generate 16 bit T files. These, these four points or these four dots will be saturated and we are not be able to analyze it because now the signal is not tally or is not corresponding to the amount of the protein that is supposed to be. It's not linear. So that's the reason why we cannot use saturated uh, image sample uh, image for analysis. With extended dynamic range, Okay, EDR, there's options in the software allows you to turn it on very easily. Then you will, the dot blot that scans with the EV EDR, you can see previously these four dots are saturated. Now they are not longer saturated and we can still see the lowly expressed protein or the low amount of quantity here. And if you plot the signals according to their known absolute amount, it will fulfill its own linear relationship between the signal intensity of the dots versus the amount of the samples itself. So you might be asking, so why should I use this? When should I use the EDR? So in my understanding, this will be useful if you have samples such as overexpressed of a protein, knockout or knock 
breakdown of a protein and in the middle should be something like your wild type or treatment control, some sort like that. In any experiments, if possible, we always advise users to fit in as much representative sample from every single group for every single assay. So this not only applies on Western blood, it can be on a 96 well plate, 384 well plate gels, it can be applicable as well. So as long as it can fit all the samples, representative samples from your individual groups, right? So here you have overexpressed samples, knockout or knockdown, where you can quantitate them on a single image, then this set of result is valid. And this set of result is, it is solid, it's quantitative. And you can represent your, I would say, technical rep uh, clinical replicates of one in the data analysis. So this is of uh, what I'll pros prospect how people will use the EDR function for. And do bear in mind, this is for fluorescent signals. So it applies on fluorescent signals that capture all the Sapphire AFL uh, equipment. How we visualize this on uh, fluorescent blot here, can, as you can see here on the right, if without the EDR, the blue channel or the blue, uh, the, the signals that they, uh, we put in blue color, will be saturated. So these are the saturation points and also the red one as well. But with EDR, well, we can still see those low express signals at, for example, at the uh, green signals, but the one in the red previously oversaturated are not longer saturated. It means this image, you can analyze the data and then move on with the rest of your analysis and subsequent planning. You don't need to tweak the load of your protein samples, you know, how to adjust it so I don't lose lowly express signals and I'm not oversaturated, whatever I see over here. You don't need to do that. You just need to turn on the EDR, scan it one time and you get your image and then that's it. You can just analyze the data for. And in terms of what kind of bit depth that you can choose, it allows you to have different kind of uh, bit depth to choose them based on the signal itself. The software will do it by itself based on these old algorithms. So just to give you a very, a very brief uh, understanding about what it means by the bit depth is the generic or the standard image output that we have on Sapphire FL or in all our Azure equipments will be 16-bit TIFF files. TIFF, raw TIFF files have all the metadata that it can be open in any third-party software that receive or they allow you to open the TIFF file to analyze such as image J. 16-bit, it has 65,000 plus bit depth. This is the range, the dynamic range of very low and the high intense signals that can fit in. As you can see, the bit depth increases. This number will increase tremendously. What it means is the range will be getting more and more, allows you to fit in the signals within the range without saturation. And you can also still visualize and also analyze the low express or low intensity signal as well. So this is what how EDR used over here, okay? And it's available on the capture software, right? Move, moving on, on gels, uh, how we use gel is it to separate protein by size. It can be 1D or 2D, it's up to the applications, okay? Right, fluorescent gels imaging, for example, over here, this is a validation of a fluorescent fusion protein right and then either they extracted from a bacteria and some sort of microbe and this is how they load it into the gel and visualize it and then and this way they don't need to probe on the membrane because it's much faster that way they will just capture load run it capture the signal and just do a very uh, quick comparison and of course there is a total protein visualization it's an alternative for the calorimetric staining that we can use common c imaging okay Right, so it's a total protein visualization. You can use it for that purpose. It can also QC and validate the cell lines. It's a very quick and easy method. And for commercy imaging, coloring metric, we can also image it on Sapphire Alpha, which is using the 685 or, or we call it IR700 channels. So this is a purified BSA separated by SDS page. So this is a gel. 
and stained with Comancy Blue and serially diluted from 5, mic 5 microgram up until 0 0.6 nanogram. And even we don't, uh, it can image under this channel and can still, we can analyze the data reliably and it's a quantitative data because it's a frozen signals. Right, chemiluminescent module. If you wish to do chemiluminescence, image chemiluminescent signals on using the Sapphire FL is itself more like a supplementary uh, equipment to complement this uh, Sapphire FL uh, application or for your lab. So this is more about the chemiluminescence module then. It can image your chemiluminescence signals uh, from the Western blot or so on. Okay. And also it allows you to do densitometry analysis where we have a package on that. It's a 21-step tablet to generate a standard curve using the EDR function as well, where you can process and I quantitate the samples of amount based on their absorbance of light, which is optical density. So that's why the densitometry works. So you can quantify the spot for your either culinary metric stain protein gels, uh, either X-ray films that image your chemi, western or radio labeled northern or southern blot. So these are the uh, main applications for the densitometry analysis. Right, coming back to Sapphire AFL, as I mentioned, there is a flexibility in terms of the sample type. You can also image multi-well plates. So we have different focus imaging samples with different depth. For membrane, it will be zero because they lie uh, on the glass bed. So it will be zero mm focus. And for a plate, as you can see, we have pre-adjusted it at plus three mm. This is based on the generic plates that we have on the market, the glass bottom plate. And then you can image your 96 well plate or 380 well, uh, 84 well plate as well. Okay, not other than the preset, we can also do D scanning, D axis. You can custom, also customize your focus. Okay, so those D plane scanning works like your confocal imaging. Okay, so it can scan at different focus. You can then we have it uh, pre-built in the software either to generate a G file to display the signals in different uh, focus or you can merge it together to showcase the signals and all together in a merge image. So this is flower, it's a sunflower image at 15 micron, again at 4 a channels uh, at intensity 5, taken an increment at 0.5 mm. So these are the signals. Uh, the image that you see, we generated for G files and a merge image, right? For how it applies in the well, well, multi well scan is here. As we know that you can either be in the planning on doing in cell Western, or we call it cell based ASA. It can be either a 96 well uh, format or 284 well format. It's a, it's a much faster way and high throughput manners of doing something like a Western, but of course it has its own restrictions, which is cells, it must be adherent cells, and also the signal must be um, the image the you need to you need to incubate, okay. Um, you might need permeabilize uh, permeabilizations um steps in order to do so. So it is great when the protein size is irrelevant to the experimental question, which is you want just want to see how much the signals. You don't really want to check what is the molecular weight of each of these protein. Most likely, these will be validated uh, by the generic Western blot before that, before they move on to in cell Western. And it can be used also as in situ detection. Uh, on the cells. So the concept is the same. You have your antigen, primary antibody, secondary antibody, plus a detector molecules. So in this Western, here we have an example of three plex data. The plate focus is plus three mm. Okay. And we have a uh, HeLa cells at one uh, one to two serial dilution from top to the bottom. And we have it uh, 700 and 800 channels detecting different proteins, RMP uh, and also GAPTH. And also we have our own total cell stains that serve as something work like a DAPI or for your normalizations, right? So coming back to the Z planes, uh, adjustable Z plane or adjustable focus. So we understand that there are different kinds of plates on the market. And sometimes you may have different kinds of samples, not, not the generic like the plate, slides, or even membrane that we, we preset in the software. 
So in a sense, you in the process of you might want to determine the best signals or the best focus for your samples, then you can do the C scan in to in to, to achieve that, or even to see uh the signals at different planes. That's the purpose of the Z scan. Right. For multi-well scanning, okay, we can what we can do is cell-based assays such as the life and death cells uh, quant uh, quanti uh, countings. So it's a multiplexing of two fluorescent dye that stain differently based on the cell's viabilities. It's a very common assay to address a dose response protein, like the toxicity test of some sort. And these uh, examples of what we have here is the HERA cells treated with acridine orange and PI that all that stains all the cells, another one will be staining the dead or dying cells. Therefore, you can count the signals based on the, uh, the ratios of uh, the signals of acridine orange and also the PI. Therefore, you can get the percentage of the viable cells based on the signals itself. And also, you can check on for your gene transfection efficiencies. This is a transfection, a transfection technique is a very commonly used technique to introduce foreign gene to your cells, either be processed in uh, using bacteria or something like a carrier cell such as HEC 293 FD. It's a very commonly used uh, technique. Right. So normally this technique will require either for a force or reporters that we in the plasmid or so on. So the next this slide will be showing you. Uh, I'll say this is the optimization that how the user uses. They are testing three different transfection methods or transfection kits, and the signal will be uh, the signal they want to detect is yellow fluorescent protein, and of course with a negative control. This is presumably this is uh, six. This is twenty four. Well played, I'll say. And image at the YFP here. Okay, you can see it's very clear cut in a single scan you can uh, quantify or you can analyze them and then get a very absolute results on which transfection technique is the best that works and works for uh, the, the research, right? So this is one of the examples. Another example will be liquid culture of cells that are expressing the red fluorescence protein. So this is on six well plate then, and we can image uh, at the single, single wells, or we can scan the entire place and then look into the wells itself and there you can actually in analyze the intensity of the red fluorescence protein in image at 520 uh wavelength uh, channels moving on you can see we can come we're coming from membrane slides uh multi uh, gels and multi well plate and up until this level maybe you're harvesting uh tissues or even you're seeding your cells on the slides to do ICC to, uh, and then to stain it. And uh, what we have on a Sapphire FL is we have accessories that to hold your slide and also to weld and also your plate that to uh, avoid this, what we call as the interference artifact, Newton rings uh, effect that you can, and it allows you to scan uh, all 15 slides simultaneously before you go to microscope. So it scans the entire slide for record keeping, and then it creates very protocol, the protocol very fast, and then you can just repeatedly scan whenever you have your slides ready. This is an example of a five micron scan resolution and tissue slides imaging. And this is a mouse lung tissue probed with a vascular endothelia, a catherine at 550 or this, this channels to image it and smooth muscle actin, actin at, this, uh, at these channels. So in image on Sapphire FL using these two standard optical modules, okay, based on this is a red and green and respectively at five micron resolutions. And we also have this scale bar allows you to burn in into the, the image uh, from our capture software. So if you're worried about how we present this in publication form, no need to worry about it. We have scale bar ready to burn in, right? So as I mentioned, this Sapphire FL scan the slide as a whole, but unfortunately it is not work. It doesn't work like a, like a microscope because it doesn't have the magnet magnification and also the eyepiece for you to do that. So what it does is it has, it allows you to scan the entire image and then it's, uh, kind of elevates one of the pain points that people may have with confocal microscope, which is the stitching. Sometimes the stitching of confocal image, uh, images 
that give you the entire field of view, you may notice that certain area may have different intensity in terms of the signals. Um, it may raise a doubt in terms of, is it because of that part is really lowly expressed or the stain, the dye is really not, the intensity is not that strong or is it because just because of the imaging part is not tally, they are not the same or because of the degraded, not the degraded, but the signal is faded because of repeated image on the confocal microscopy. So for Sapphire FL, what well, our user in that use our classic Sapphire Sapphire is increment, they frequently use it to image tissue slide to give you an entire field of view of the slide itself. So this is the main purpose of the tissue slide imaging here. After than that, you can also image microarray formatted slides in either I can be either a protein or either be either way they can allow you to tag with four or false. There's no limitation in terms of that, I'll say sample type. The most importantly is fluorescence protein or oh, sorry, for us, uh, for our force or the dye that allows you to that the Sapphire FL can image. Okay, so it doesn't need to be protein. It can be a DNA, RNA, as long as the signal that it emits is a fluorescence, fluorescently labeled pro uh, uh, fluorescence signals, or signals that is non-generic, maybe an M cherry, uh, YFP, and so on. But you can just check the compatibility list, and if it's okay, then you can scan with the Sapphire FL. Specialty sample can be scanned in five micro resolutions for optimal image creation and downstream analysis. So this is a full moon bio calibration slide that we usually use to calibrate our Sapphire FL. It scan at five micron resolutions to check the spots to center to center to show that resolution is indeed at five micron resolution. It is indeed very nicely done. Next, we have tissue array, which is a uh, tumor samples versus normal samples. So this array type, each of these tissue types are about 1.5 mm in diameters, which is quite small. And they are stained with two different uh, staining, Hotchiss Blue, that's fixed for your DNA, staining your DNA and nuclei. And another one staining for filamentous protein that is indicating for uh, for the, how say, the express of the tumor protein like that. So multiple tumor matched uh, tumor and normal tissue microarray. This is scanned at 10 micro resolutions. And we have these also ready in application notes. If you're interested, you can feel free to check out our website to look at how uh, peop, uh, how the researchers done on these uh, samples and an image on Sapphire FL. Next, moving on now from slide, let's moving on to animal imaging. The very clear example will be imaging of living animal cell uh, and small animals such as mice over here. And we have five anesthesia pod, gaseous anesthesia pod for you to put the mice on sleep while you scan uh, entire while the entire scanning run. And it has 4 cm clearance, okay? So anything within 4 cm, then you can fill it in. Feel free to put it in and then scan it. Again, not other than the small uh, living organism like mice, it, you can also scan your zebra fish and uh, sea elegant and so and so forth. So what it does is allow us to scan multiple animals at the same time among all say living organism at the same time. And then you while you put them on sleep, so they are not, twitching and twerking, and then affecting the data. So imaging living uh, small animals is an in vivo assays. So what it does is there are different kind of uh, research that do different time point. For this case, this is either be cell migrating studies or preclinical drug testing or tracking a certain marker to the uh, to migration other place over time. And dedicated instruments are quite expensive and bulky. For example, uh, I can't think of that. Okay, the IVs and so on. Right, so here we have an image showing the torso of two living uh, mice under anesthesia. Okay, so top will be the head. So these are bottom. So these are scanned at 100 micron as a fire airfell. So the dark area over here is basically the area that we shave off the fur. As you all know, uh, fur will have autophorus uh, issue. That's why if you want to image a live organism, more, normally we'll shave off the fur. Or else if best, you can you can use new mice or new, uh, and even it's even better in that sense. One of the examples that we use in this uh, or we use on Sapphire FL will be in vivo tumor imaging. 
Yeah, will be the part uh, actually not here, but the down, down part, bottom part that is lying on the glass bed will be here having the tumors. So the mice were injected the RFP expressing 41 cells and then they image at 100 microns after 11 days. Okay, whereas the RFP will be using uh, the 522 channels to image it. So this is after 11 days. And before that, uh, they are basically about C cells. We have actually in our four days post injection that we can see the region that it injects is actually just a, a lump of mass that we can't see anything. 11 days of post injection, 14 days post injection. This allows a user or researcher to monitor the growth of the tumor across the time point. For example, if you need to monitor day by day, 24 hours, then it allows you to do so. And you just need to put the mice on scan and then perhaps fix on their region, you can get the result within, I'll say, of a few hours. So this is very useful for uh, cancer research that do uh, in vivo tumor progressions, uh, studies either being drug testing or so on, because they doesn't need to sacrifice so many mice because due to that different time point, because they cannot image it at, uh, uh, they can't really image it in vivo, uh, therefore they have to harvest out at different time points. So you just need one set of mice or a group of mice, then you image, you just capture the progression of the tumor growth day by day, and therefore you get the result. And in a way, it saves you a lot of a time and also cost because you don't need to take it for so many mice and then reduce the cost in terms of the uh the time uh, management as well right is sapphire fl is a confocal imaging techniques without without the magnification part this is something i need to stress on right so what you what you have is this is the this is the data uh, like i can see here you have a samples here and then the it's all from a point to point scanning Okay, it's a laser scanning and using the detector like either be PMT or APD. So it's a point-to-point -point scanning. That's why it's confocal, right? But without the magnification part. Therefore, we can image it as such pixel-to-pixel -pixel, uh, intensity at very high resolutions, 5 micro resolutions. Here's a very quick glance of the GIF file that we produce from this uh, confocal, uh, sorry, uh, Sophia FL imaging of the live animal. So we have three... Okay, uh, mice that injected with the RFP tagged 41 cells that will induce tumor in the subcutaneous area. Okay, so you can see the, the depth of the tumor itself, the growth. Okay, so it's, it's scanned at different plane. Okay, so you can see it's scanned from 0 to 3 mm of the leaving mice under anesthesia. The image is under 100 micron. We have also negative control at the side here. So they're also injecting the tumor but without the RFP tag. So you can see that it's very clear cut that there's a growth there, but we can't see the signals. So it's very, this what indicating is the, the Sapphire Alpha is very sensitive. If there's signals, then you sure will see that. This is ex vivo dissected tumor imaging where we harvest the uh, tumor out of the, the, the mice after 11 days. So you can see just to tally with the results that we get from the in, uh, image. So X vivo, right? So these are data, uh, RFP plus tumor, tech tumor, and the one that without the tumor, but without the RFP tech. Uh, visualization at different plane as well, Z plane, uh, Z, uh, Z scanning uh, to show the, the growth or the uh, overall 3D structures, no structures, but 3D, how it looks like uh, in that different plane. So Fire FL also allows you to image phosphor imaging what it means by phosphor imaging is a higher sensitive detection method for radioactive samples. So it is basically to detect any assay that require a radioactive and can be reused the same screen for over and over again for many experiments. So it uses PMT for that purpose. So you can see at different optical modules, they are basically using different detectors and you can look at the excited emission wavelengths that are adapted for their channels. And uh, so I was just spare you update. This is just a generic uh, linear detection to show you the linear relationship that we can detect using the standard plate to uh, that we tested on the Sapphire FL. Uh, in brief, Sapphire FL it gives you dye and fluorescence signals flexibility, sam application and sample type flexibilities, and also a very highly sensitive 
for sun detection at fine micro resolutions and supporting your applications from in vivo up to in vivo, uh, sorry, in vivo uh, down to in vitro or all the way up. Okay, so it doesn't only covers uh, mice, it can covers any living organism such as zebra fish and so on and so forth. So if you're interested, we have multiple application nodes that are dedicated for specific application. For example, in cell Western over here, you can look at the data, how we produce the data, how the culture and so on. And here will be the in vivo imaging and monitoring of the tumor in the mice using the Sapphire Airfield. They will have more in-depth uh, results on how the entire uh, experiment is done. And also fluorescence IHC imaging of tumor tissue arrays on the Sapphire Airfield. And we also have a, a, a large signal, a, a large picture on a single slide as well. Basically, Sapphire Airfield can be applied to a lot of applications. The rule of thumb will be the the signal can be is compatible with the Sapphire FL, for example, the generic fluorescence, and also any other custom uh, fluorescence signal. Also, you can do so, right? So, in summary, Sapphire FL is the ultimate imager for flexibility with the customizable and user changeable laser and filter modules. You can easily adapt or can use a mix and match uh, with your changing needs and advances research. So not only uh, you don't need to bind to the generic R uh, RGB in your infrared fluorescent channels, it can be scaled up to YFP, any other fluorescence tech or any other uh, reporters that you want to you want to image it on. It can scan the five micron resolutions up to five micron. Z plane adjustable focus ranging from uh, minus one up to six mm. Five gaseous anesthesia port for imaging live animals. Uh, and chemical luminescence detection with the additional modules. So we are a Zuba system. We have imaging solutions for uh, basically your uh, routine laboratory works and applications. And I am Kai Ling. Thank you for your attentions. I will open the floor for Q&A.